played out, you know, from a emotional and a physical standpoint, a structure standpoint, about the way I you know, thought and tried to prepare the guys. And I think you know, looking at Illinois before before the game and what they were potentially going to do, I thought they did they, they stuck to the game plan really really well, and I knew you know, rebounding was going to be something that they were going to focus in the locks and watch the film, particularly. You know, the, the two games that they played, that they were a lot of people, and there was young <coughs> guys, you know, and uh, sometimes it doesn't matter who it is. And you know, just they just go to the offensive glass and force you to have to, to box out, and that's the way Brad has coached for a long time. And, and you know, by virtue of that, I thought, you know, for the, the margin of the nine points or whatever happened in different runs, that you know, their, their will uh, was imposed both physically and structurally a little bit better over 40 minutes than ours was. Um, so, you know, credit to, to them. They did a really good job. And, and, and when you're playing at home, you get energized a little bit. And I thought they were. And, uh, credit to Mark Smith as a freshman who you know, probably was just the, the most poised of all the players on the floor today for, for both teams. He just played the game. He got lost in the game and, uh, and, and made more plays and, uh, and rebounds, got himself to the line. You know, 12 for 12 from the free throw line is a credit to what he was able to do. He's got a big, strong body, broad shoulders, and can absorb contact. So what he did physically, but especially impressive, was his, his mental approach to the game. <clears throat> questions? Dave, when that many uh, fouls are called, uh, what do you tell your team, and, and how do you kind of do react to it. My, my, my conversation with, with referees is always constant. It's there. I'm trying to you know, navigate situations, but you know, we, we, we didn't do as good a job, and I don't think a lot of calls that were made were, were bad calls. You know, there's always a few, um, but we, we had a more difficult time than we should have, keeping the ball in front of us. Uh, and then when we didn't do as good a job, we, we used our hands. and. You got to play defense with your feet, your body, and <coughs> your lateral movement most of the time. And, and we we got too many times where we, we wanted our hands to be the completion of our defensive presence, and that that's never a good recipe for success on a defensive end. And, you know, um, we, so I, I mean, it was a physical game. Both teams were trying to put the ball on you, and, and it wasn't. You know, side to side. The beautiful offense sometimes move the ball, change sides of the floor. This was north and south. Both teams were going north and south, and uh, you know they they did probably a good job uh, uh, as, as we were using their hand, our hands. They were using a little bit more of their bodies. Both of them were supposed to be fouls, but um, that, I think that's why a lot of fouls were called today. Dave, no, no points from McCallum. What was troubling him tonight? I mean, it's just uh, nothing troubling him. It's just that he didn't, you know, those things happen. And, and uh, with this team, you know, it, it, no one would predict that, that Justin, uh, after Devil was going out, was getting 19 points. And so, you know, his 19 will probably some trades that he would normally get. But you know, with, the, with the way it was structured, it, each night somebody is going to have something well go for him. And that means that, that, that uh, something may not go well for another guy, only in the category of point scoring. And so I, I think it's a major mistake for, for me or anybody to look at Trey you know, it's how did he play? How did he play? And I say to these guys all the time, 95% of the time you're on the floor, you don't have the ball in your hands. So if we, if we locked into who scored what and who didn't score what, then we make a, a, a major, major mistake. I want to ask another one. It's just um, a lot of buzz around this game, it seemed like, after such a long time playing. Is this something you can see or wanting to explore doing more? You know, that's, it's, it's probably not for the chair that I sit in. There are, there are a lot of, you know, the, 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 the word politics is uh, needs its own dictionary to describe all the meanings for it. And I don't know politically over 60 years, you know, I went around, obviously. Um, I, I think if you ask Brad or if you ask me, it's a great game to play. But at the same time, <laughs> If he looks at his Big Ten schedule, especially the way it is now, he's got to play, you know, games very early. Uh, if you're trying to talk about rivalries, he's got to go play Missouri, which is a, a must game. He's got to go do other things than to fit another game like this. You know, it takes some contemplation. It has to have some people sitting down. And if you're going to do that, and I know for, for us included, then something else has got to give because I'm not going to play 18 games in the Big East season at Illinois and then still play the schedule. It's just, it doesn't make sense for our kids. 
Uh, it makes sense for the sport. It makes sense for the region. But, you know, uh, we, we play Notre Dame now. We play Northwestern. If we play Illinois and we play UIC and we play, you know, you, we keep going on. Those are emotional games. And uh, when, when you're playing 18 in the conference tournament in the Big Ten, Big East, or any league, that's, that's, that's a lot. Uh, but I'll be the first one to say that this is really good basketball for, for both programs. And uh, if we're playing at home and home, I think uh, there'd be a lot of interest. Yeah, but, you know, it's something that uh, you know, we'll, we'll be, I'm sure, discussed after, after tonight. Justin, uh, when there's that many fouls call in the game, how difficult is it for you to establish uh, you know, an offensive flow or rhythm? Um, I'm not really, I, we, we weren't really worried about the fouls. We were worried about rebounding. We, did, uh, we didn't do a good job on rebounding. Uh, the refs aren't perfect, neither are we, but we can't blame the refs. I mean, we didn't do our job off in our offense and defense. So, Coach, with uh, Kane, McCallum, and – oh, over here. Uh, with Kane, McCallum, and Struis picking up two fouls in the first half, do you feel like they just couldn't get into the rhythm? With? No, I mean, that happens a lot. It, you know, there's a lot of game to be played, and I just – I didn't want – Especially this early in the season, we're trying to figure out if a guy can handle two fouls or not to, uh, uh, to, to keep them in the game and risk getting the third. But uh, again, I, I think basketball players are, are good because they do so many other things. And if I were concerned you know, about what they were doing uh, for that 5% of the time, as I mentioned before, that they have the ball in their hands, uh, then, uh, then I, I would approach it wrong with my, my counsel of them. So those guys can play. They certainly can play offense. It's, it's our job uh, to put them in better positions, um, to feed them with more understanding of what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it, and provide as a result more confidence. And then, you know, they'll, they'll, those guys have made plays their whole life, and they'll, they'll do so. I'm over here. Uh, Justin, after Devin went down, how comfortable did you, did you feel as the main ball handler, the main playmaker? Uh, came around with the bench, scored seven quick points. So I guess what was... What what made you so effective tonight? Um, just being ready. I mean, I was always told that if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So I was just, I was just ready. I have confidence in my game. Coach has confidence in my game. That's why he put me in. So, uh, coach, back here. Sorry. Uh, with uh, you stressed that rebounding was a big point of the for your game today. What was a uh, how did you have to adjust that game plan when Marin went uh, got <laughs> into, uh, bad foul trouble? Well, you know, I, I, again, I, I don't I didn't put him responsible for all the rebounding. You know, we we uh, Jalen Butts is a, a young, but he's a very aggressive uh, rebounder. Um, a lot of their offensive rebounds and a lot of what's going on was was in that twelve to seventeen foot area, which which takes away from. You know, a, a big guy who's usually lurking around the basket. And so, you know, the, the, a lot of their, if you, if you look statistically, a lot of their offensive rebounds were by guards. You know, Jordan was, a, who was in more of a swing. He's three. Uh, Williams got four. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, they spread the, the wealth around in, in terms of guys getting offensive rebounds. So, it, it, I don't think I looked at it from that standpoint that Barnes followed trouble, hurt us on, on the backwards. Any other questions? What, is the, what do you know about Devin's injury, the extent of it? And I haven't, not, not nothing yet. Oh, yeah. I just I walked off the court, we talked to the team, and you know, he was, um, we talked about it on the bench, but we'll, we'll evaluate it tonight and tomorrow and see where, where we go from there. It's his ankle? Yeah, it's his ankle. Anything else? All right, thanks.